Belisarius' prime skills are out, just like my tears when I first found out he doesn't have AoE. But in every ugliness, there is beauty to be found. A wise man once said, your happiness depends on the quality of your thoughts. So today we're gonna discuss what is Belisarius actually good for, who is he good for, and how he should be used. So, according to the recent months, months, we had some interesting releases. For example, we had Lapu Lapu, which is good for city defense, during a rally, for example, or swarm. And it's only good for whales, for those who like to random teleport during pass opening and be violated. So, Lapu Lapu. Okay, no problem. Alongside Lapu Lapu, we had the tower commanders, the new engineering commanders. What this and is? that's not something you see every day, right? But we are getting there. So, a few months pass by, and we have the new generation of cavalry, which is Eleanor and Belisarius Prime. As you all may know, Eleanor is good for pass defense, and Belisarius, well, he is good for swarming stuff, basically. Do you see what I'm going with this? Are you following? That means that Lilis is focusing on niche commanders, at least according to this pattern that they have been going on. So, niche commanders. Niche. I think the name should be obvious. They are not for regular motherfuckers like me and you. They are for a specific type of players who play in a specific type of way, right? And Lilis acknowledges that, and that's why they have been working on these commanders. Another best example is the circle and testicle formation that they added months ago to the game. Or, something even better, the staggered formation that they announced today in the system mail that will be added in the next update, I believe, which is basically increases the march speed of reinforcement troops. So all of these, they are niche, niche things, niche roles that are slowly but surely coming to the game. So this niche trend is not only exclusive to commanders, but it's also for formations, it's for equipment, as you know, we are getting more and more siege equipment for tower commanders and they are even getting added to KVK shop that you can buy with KVK coins. So I feel like this trend is gonna go for a while until Lilis feels comfortable to get us back on the right track which is releasing AOE commanders for open field and for more wall fighting which is exactly for regular motherfuckers like you and me. Personally I would say this is a good thing, like diversity, it can be good. It stops the game from being repetitive and boring, and also it stops you from always staying up to date, always keeping up with all these new commanders that uh, free to play, for example, they can't always have enough gold hits to invest with all these frequent releases, right? So this can be good. And the best example is me myself. I don't have Liu Che and I don't have Heman Prime. And but Isaiah's Prime, for example, he allowed me to invest in those commanders, like Liu Che, who has 5 target AoE, which is insane, just like Zhuge Liang, or Heman Prime, which has an insane monster debuff that every player must have. Think of it like this, a failure is an opportunity, one man's trash is another man's treasure. When a door closes, another door opens. Now I know in this video I got too much philosophical, but uh, I feel like I'm spitting facts, like I'm spitting fire today. God damn. Daddy Furious is on fire. You see, after I broke up with Mimi, I feel like my third eye has been opened. I can see clearly now. I can see the past and the future. I took the red pill and escaped the matrix. Call me Doctor Strange because I have a third leg. Ah, I mean third eye. You were supposed to keep it PG-18, you fucking dumbass. Alright, let's get back to the topic of this video, which I believe it was Pedicellus Prime. We got distracted there for a second. But I feel like I had to get those information out of my chest. By the way, if you found those information useful, then do me a favor, smash the like button and subscribe. Help that if you reach 4k subs, honestly that would be amazing. And that would make my day for tomorrow. So let's go baby. And back to Billy Cyrus Prime. Should you invest in him or should you skip this dude? I mean, who the hell even is this guy, right? What does he do? Well, that's actually pretty simple. After discussing with few other creators like myself, I came to conclusion that Billy Cyrus Prime is actually pretty awesome, pretty decent for people who are running at least, at least 5 marches and above. Better if 6 marches or 7. And that means high spenders, people who are able to unlock the 6th march or 7th march early in KVK. So that automatically puts free to plays out of the picture, like goodbye, it was nice to see ya, Habibi, don't come to Dubai. I mean, he doesn't necessarily have to be 
exclusively for high spenders, right? Even low spenders can invest in Billy Sales Prime or free to plays only, only in case if you are the swarmer in your kingdom. Like your kingdom gave you the role of swarming stuff, swarming shit, right? In that case, you can invest in Belisarius Prime because the more Belisarius we have swarming, the better to always keep that deception effect active on the target, right? So the target needs more rage to burst their active skill. Only in that case, if you're free to play low spender, then you are free to invest in Belisarius Prime. Now, let's get back to high spenders. Why is he such a good commander for high spenders? For people who are running five or more marches. That is in fact thanks to his expertise skills. And to put it simple, it increases the DPS of all your marches that are attacking a target. So, increased DPS, damage per second. It's one of the best debuffs right next to Herman Prime's debuff. Like one of the best in the game, right? So, in that case, you must have five marches constantly attacking something to be able to be to get the max benefit from his expertise skill. If you go lower than five marches, then you lose benefit, right? You you do less damage, you do less DPS. And it's his expertise goes to waste. That is why I say the more marches you have attacking something, the better. If your six march dies, you have the fifth march, right? Alive to keep attacking. If your seventh march dies, you have six march and then five march and then so on, right? Like you always have five marches attacking until the target eventually dies. So again, if you invest in Belisarius Prime and you only have three or four marches running on the field, then that's just a waste of his expertise, right? Like why the hell are you even investing in this guy? Just invest in any other commander that you can get the max benefit from. See? Very easy. Now, let's say you are free to play, right? But you have five marches. Your marches must be solid, like all commanders with max skills, the best equipments, the best armaments. And in that case, yeah, you can invest in Belisarius Prime right if you're free to play and then we are gonna go towards um the three cavalry lineup for our march let's say you want to run three cavalry one archer one infantry or like any other extra but three cavalry in your lineup the first one is gonna be nev with juan prime nevsky with juan prime that is the best cavalry in our lineup so that's the first the second option is huo with billy Cyrus prime now belly is unfortunately a secondary commander because of his talent tree, right? Belisarius doesn't have the skill tree and he doesn't have the support tree. And that alone immediately puts him on the secondary commander. That's it. No other choice. So Belly must be always a secondary. Now secondary to who, you may ask? The best option that we have at the moment is Huo or Nevsky. Now Nevsky, we already decided, he is with Juan Prime. So that puts it with Huo. I mean, we also have XY, and XY has AOE, right? It, it makes more sense to pair him with XY. But, hmm, XY is a glass cannon. If he gets targeted, he dies fast, and your Belisarius goes to waste. You will not get the benefit from his expertise, and you will not get the debuff that he offers you, right? So that's a waste. And you want to put him with a commander that lasts longer compared to XY. And that's, hmm, that is Huo Cubing. He has more tankiness let's say than xy so that is immediately a better option than xy so that is why our second lineup of cavalry is huo with Belisarius prime and the third lineup is xy with william now running a third cavalry march is entirely optional it's up to you if you want to run that you can instead run a secondary a second infantry march or a second archer march for example Boudicca prime with usher barnipal which is very good right or for example, Liu Che with Alex, or Guan with Scipio. It's different combinations. It's, it's basically a play with combinations that you can do yourself. Even my five-year-old niece can do that. It's very simple. So running a third cavalry march in your lineup is optional. In this case, it would be XY with William, and you can also do XY with Justinian, but I prefer William because William has very good buffing for your commanders. It buffs your commanders, and that's why I prefer William. And to be honest, you can't really underestimate this guy. William is still very good. In 2024, and even in Canyon, in Open Field, in Mordeball, he is a monster. So, XY William. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind, if your kingdom has few activity, for example, you are playing in B or C seed, you might want to bench XY entirely, as he can be easily spotted on the field and be targeted. And in that case, well, he goes down very fast, and it's a waste for his speedups and resources. So, in that case, this would be our new cavalry lineup for running three cavalry. Number one, is Nevsky with William. Number two, it's Juan Prime 
with belly as secondary and number three is Huo with voyage tree. Now Huo voyage tree is as good as Huo with William. It, perfect, it performs the same and voyage tree has circular AOE which is just perfect. And let's just say you just don't give a fuck about Belisarius, you don't want Belisarius in your lineup, you just want two solid cavalry marches in your lineup. That would be Nevsky with John Prime and Huo with William. You can switch the secondaries of these commanders so you can do Nevsky with William and Huo with John Prime. It is the same, doesn't really matter and at the end of the day it's a play with combinations and you should use however you feel comfortable. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now I know this might be a lot of information for your noodle up there to digest. So here is a summary of what I just said. Only invest in Belisarius if you have five solid field marches. And by solid, I mean really solid. Max skills, best equipments, etc. Because as soon as your active field marches drop below five, you will start losing benefits from Belly's expertise skill. That's the first thing you keep in mind. Second thing, if you're a high spender, max take run 7 marches, that's even better, and in that case, Belisarius is really special for you. So free to plays, low spends, don't overuse your brain too much, you know, just take it easy. Instead of Belisarius, you can focus on Liu Che for example, or Heman Prime, which have AoE, both of them. And AoE is king, king on the field, king on the murder ball, and the king for getting you more kills and kill points. Alright, that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something new, maybe something philosophical along the way. And if you did, like always, smash the like button and subscribe does me a huge favor. I'll see you very soon, sooner than your dad who left to get milk. And uh, until next time, take care and peace out. Better late than never, bro. <laughs>